Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing a very special feature, or theorem in the new calculus rather, one that I call the Gabriel polynomial. Um, <coughs> but before I do that, I'd just like to talk a little bit about the most important part of Newton's document that was written almost 400 years ago and called De Analisi. Um, the document was written in Latin and the first interesting part appears on page 96 which you're looking at in front of you right now. So this diagram over here where I'm pointing to with my cursor is in fact the diagram that appears in Newton's document and it's actually explaining how he uses finite differences to approximate the value of functions so <coughs> what I've done is I've tilted this diagram around as you see over here so that it's easy to understand uh, what he does is he takes the difference between this ordinate and this ordinate and calls it B. And then the difference between this ordinate this ordinate calls it B2. And these differences here are the first differences. Then the second differences are the differences between B and B2. That would be C. B and B3, C2. And this row over here is the third difference row, the fourth difference, fifth difference, and so on. Obviously, you, you're only going to have dif differences up to and including the number of derivatives. So, for example, if a function has uh, power of 4, then the number of differences uh, that are possible are 5. So, the last, the number, of the total number of rows you'll have here in, in this diagram here will be 5 but it varies for each function. Uh, obviously if you have an indefinitely differentiable function such as you know sine or cosine or any other trigonometric function then the differences will continue ad infinitum. Now, these differences here are called divided differences and I explain how to you know work with them and how to arrive at Taylor's theorem in my publication called How We Got Calculus which is available at my website and so my idea for the Gabriel polynomial came from this particular concept so let's see how it's constructed I define finite differences in terms of the mean of each given interval. So for example, the notation mu subscript 0 and superscript 1 means the first order mean. And the first difference denoted by the subscript. So mu always refers to the abscissa or the x-coordinate of the mean. And the following diagram explains. So in this first diagram, the first order differences are these means here. Uh, 0 means this subscript 0 means it's the first mean uh, this, this subscript 1 means it's the second mean because we begin subscripting at 0 this one here means the third mean and the top number means the order difference in this case they're all first order differences in this row here they're all second order differences so with respect to first order differences there is there is really no difference between my uh, scheme in Newton's because our first order differences are exactly the same. However, when we get to the second order differences, that's when my method difference differs with Newton's approach. So Newton's second order divided difference is given here, where you see me highlighting. But compare this with my definition. Now notice the, the main uh, distinction comes in the difference, the finite difference that appears in the denominator. Typically this would have been x, subscript, eps, x subscript 0 minus x subscript 2. But what you have here is the first order mean subtracted from each other to arrive at 
the second derivative with this abscissa here as an argument. In other words, with mu subscript 0, superscript 2 is the argument for this particular uh, derivative. And we can derive the new polynomial using this identity here uh, to eventually arrive at what you see there, which is the Gabriel polynomial. Now, I'd like to tell you that that's just one form of the Gabriel polynomial. If, for example, there are higher order derivatives, then that could easily be extended to a third order derivative as follows. So, for example, we can have <coughs> we can have that same polynomial that you see down here. Whoops, the one that you see down here. Let me just change the color. Blue, this one, okay. And we could write that as f of x zero is equal to f of x one plus x zero, or rather, sorry, rather just x. Actually, it's x zero. I'm sorry. X zero minus x one f of mu one one that's the first derivative of mu one one plus x zero minus x one mu zero one minus mu one one f two of mu one two okay that's mu one two uh, plus and this is where it differs because of the third order x zero minus x one again u0 now you have the second order differences okay denoted by the superscript 2 and finally the third order derivative with the abscissa being this mu here okay so this polynomial that you see over here is exactly um, the same in terms of approximation. Well, actually, it's a better approximation because it has an extra mu, but it's the same as as this one down here. So, this polynomial here and this polynomial here are two different forms that can be used if a function has second and third order derivatives. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's go back to the document and see an example and we, we, we can see an example here in the cortic x to the power of 4 plus x cubed minus x squared plus x right over here and we can apply the Gabriel polynomial to see that we get exact results so these mu's here were obtained by an iterative method you could use Newton Raphson if you want to or any other iterate, iterative method and you will find that the final result is 102, which is exactly what we expected for the estimation of F3. Now, in the applet over here, I actually show you how these mu's here, which are the pink dots, these are estimated mu's, not true mu's, can be used together with the second order mu, which you don't see here because x1 is one of the coordinates, but they can be used to estimate the polynomial. So F3 is 102. And as we move this green point closer and closer, we see that the Gabriel approximation and the Taylor approximation both get closer to 102, with the Gabriel approximation error being far less than the Taylor approximation error, er error as you can see over here. So moving them closer and closer, you'll see that both of them start converging on 102 and finally when the points are all aligned <coughs> the Gabriel polynomial gives exactly the same result however the Gabriel polynomial is far more accurate as you can see and this is true for any function you can for example type the name of another function down here as f of x is equal to x5 yes and <coughs> with similar results you can 
see what happens as you get closer and closer. Watch the difference here in the in the Taylor approximation. It's 55, and it's only six there for the Gabriel polynomial. So there's a vast difference in terms of accuracy. <coughs> okay. And as you get to zero, both of them converge to the true value. So the Taylor approximation is really very inferior to the Gabriel polynomial. Let's just undo that so we can go back to the previous one we had. And now we can actually watch the calculations taking place. So in these in these boxes here, you can you can see what's happening, yeah, as you're calculating each of the values, both for the Gabriel polynomial and the Taylor approximation or the Taylor series. And so that's what's happening there you can also see the advantages of the Gabriel polynomial and these are very important it always has a finite number of terms variable up to the nth derivative is a far better approximation <coughs> using estimated mu's and it's excellent in causal systems where the function is assumed to be continuous and smooth but no mathematical model is known finally it's very good for curve fitting or non-linear regression. There are other uses. Um, for example, the Gabriel polynomial has been used in computer-aided design. It's also been used in computer graphics. It's been used in physics and engineering. So it has a lot of uses. Uh, causal systems are especially important. So for example, um, where the model is not known and you're, you're getting real-time data from some device, and you don't know what the function is, it just passes real-time data to you and you go by the assumption that uh, the, p the past mu's that you've read will be an indication of the future mu's. So it's a little complicated for my demonstration here, but those who have worked in causal systems will know what I mean. And then finally, um, here are the two two different versions. Obviously, if there's a fourth derivative, you can have yet another polynomial, and so on. Uh, it's interesting to note, though, that this second order polynomial here that I used, just the second order here, gives you uh, gives you surprisingly accurate results, as you've seen me demonstrate to you here. So, you know, for example, if somebody was programming the sign tables or the logarithms into a calculator, you could easily use the Gabriel polynomial with greater uh, advantages in terms of speed and accuracy over the Taylor polynomial. Okay, and so that's pretty much all I wanted to demonstrate for this video. Um, this is the new calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel. I'm glad you could join me in this video and I look forward to seeing you at some future time here again on the new calculus channel. Take care.